a member of the Anti-Racist Alliance. And uh, wow, what a day to be here, right? We're so happy. We've been working uh, since, actually we've been meeting at the, at the Y since last July, every month, and each month more and more people come, right? I um, was asked if, of course I could introduce my dear friend, David Dillies, but in addition to that, to give you a brief history of how it is that we got here today, and then of course to bring up everybody who, who made it happen. But my name is Sandy Bernard, I'm a social worker, and I live in Westchester County, and 10 years ago, completed an Undoing Racism workshop at the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond. And I, uh, and along with other social workers, were baffled. Why is it that we, seasoned human service educators and practitioners and people committed to social justice, <coughs> racial justice, why is it that we had never received the information the way that it was delivered so that we could actually do something? We realized that <coughs> our education, elementary, middle, high school, undergraduate, graduate, that there wasn't anywhere where we received a body of knowledge that didn't have holes in it, that would leave us powerless and baffled. Our good intentions were always directed towards, you know, fixing the problem, fixing the problem. So the People's Institute came into town. Actually, it was uh, in Rockland County where uh, we, we first met the People's Institute. And they changed our lives. And we're beginning to change the way the profession sees the world. It was like, Gil Golden will say, it was like putting on corrective lenses. Oh. Now I see. There isn't anything that I as an individual can do. There's something much greater than that, you know? So we started organizing. We started organizing. We said, we want to be sure that anybody who graduates from the United States of America with a degree in human services has this clarity. That we will be part of a movement to transform the way we are educated so that our education would actually prepare us not only to address the consequences of racism, but to begin a movement to transform the way the systems are arranged so that we can undo structural racism. Because we have, we have learned through this process of undoing racism in the workshop, our history, you know, what had happened, why it had happened, how uh, social policy at the federal level, you know, drives it, and David Billings will be speaking of that. So in many ways it was like, a, if anybody here has ever heard of a planned family intervention for somebody who is chemically dependent, right? All of a sudden there's this massive attempt to finally give you a, a worldview that's accurate. Everybody is there, all the pieces are there, and the chemically dependent person who's been living in a delusion all their, their days can finally see something, and in seeing something there's a possibility of recovery. And the Undoing Racism workshop was like that. In seeing something with clarity, there was a possibility that we could do something. Wow, that was awesome. In that moment, it was like, oh my God, I've been had, I've been delusional, I've been, you know, playing into something. That's not why I became a human service worker. None of us did that. But yet we, we, we saw the ways in which we had been confused and the ways in which we were looking at reality in a way that wasn't really giving us the story. So the Undoing Racism uh, workshop for so many of us became like an intervention. And we started the road to recovery, recovery of a reality of accuracy, understanding that white meant something and what it meant to be white, and, and it's been awesome. The people who we meet in our journey are incredible people. Everybody is well intended, but when we hit, up, when we hit racism, it's kind of like people gulp and don't know what to do about it. That. That's always the issue, what do we do about it, what do we do about it? Well, we know what to do about it. When we work as a collective, we get strong, we get human, we get happy. We cry and we laugh, and at least we know where we're headed. There's a roadmap that is at least pointing in the right direction. So after a lot of study or whatever, we started organizing, and we started organizing in Westchester County, we started organizing in New York City, and we made a commitment that we were going to keep organizing and offering these workshops until everybody took it, or at least enough people took it that we could begin to see some changes in systems. So um, in two weeks, we are, will offer a workshop 34 and 35 or 36 in June. We've had over 1,500 human service workers and educators come through the workshop. 
And as a result of that, we're starting to see changes. NASW in New York City has taken this on big time. And we know that NASW here is sponsoring this event, and we're, we're moving to really build a movement by bringing in people. So we started organizing in New York City, we started organizing in Westchester County, Nashville. It's only natural that we come to Fairfield County. It's only natural that we be here to reach out to the social work body and bring in everybody. So I'm saying social work, but really it's human services. Anybody who touches a human being needs to undo racism, right? So I, I don't want to be exclusive, even though by profession I always default to social work. So don't feel excluded. I say that we've met uh, extraordinary people. And I would like to, before I introduce David Billings, right? I would like to ask the, the organizers in um, Fairfield County in Connecticut to please come up so that we can all be together and you can see that it, it takes a village to make something happen and see who's right in your midst who has a commitment to undoing racism. So would you all come up, please? 